Steven Seagal is not a fighter. Van Damme's not a fighter, man. Bruce Lee is not a fighter. Hey guys, in a previous video, I had said, when Michael Jai White is on the DJ Vlad show, it's like the gift that keeps on giving. It is the truth. They will put out different topics, he will say different things, and it'll ruffle feathers in the martial arts community. It's controversial stuff in my opinion, and it's worth commenting about. So I'm gonna do another one. I gotta preface this though. Uh, the previous video I'm referencing was the one when he said Jackie Chan could beat up Bruce Lee, right? I think Jackie, J Jackie Chan would Chan. win. In your prime versus Bruce Lee, who would win? Bruce Lee. Really? Yes. No question? No question. I think Jackie, J Jackie Chan, Chan would Chan. win. But anyway, I gotta preface this video because of all the comments, there's certain ones that annoy and bug me and I just wanna clarify. So people will say, oh, you're a Michael Jai White hater. It's like, I am not. And I'm gonna explain what my definition of a hater is. And I'm also gonna explain why I'm not a hater, just in general. I'm just not, regardless of who it is, whether it's MJW or anybody else, that's just not who I am. And I'll tell you how I define a hater and basically why I'm not a hater. But from day one on this channel, I have always said I like and I respect Michael Jai White as a martial artist and as a fitness guy, because basically that's how I live my life too. I'm a martial artist and I'm a fitness guy. And obviously he's got really great results in both fields. I think he's a great martial artist and obviously he's built a very good physique. He's very athletic. So yes, I respect him for that. The point of this video though is, it seems there's there's a disconnect. It's incongruent when he will say that or you know claim that he's a fighter, but guys like John Claude Van Damme, Steven Seagal, Bruce Lee, etc., are not fighters. Steven Seagal is not a fighter. Van Damme's not a fighter, man. Bruce Lee is not a fighter. And I'm gonna analyze that and comment on that because if he wants to qualify himself as a fighter, then I don't think he could say Van Damme, Steven Seagal, Bruce Lee are not fighters. Either they're fighters too, or he's not. And we're, that, that's the topic of this video based on what he said in this latest DJ Vlad interview. But let me preface a couple of things real quick. So some of the comments, and this is really annoying just in general, really annoying, man. And this needs to stop. Obviously, you know, the issues probably feels like it's bigger than it is because there are certain comments that you really remember. I, I hope most people don't think like this. I know there are people that do think like this, and I do blame a certain narrative that's being pushed that creates this thought process in people. It's really sad. I honestly, I feel sorry for these individuals that make these kind of comments, and if they live their life like that, it's they're not gonna have a good life, in my opinion. Uh, too much hatred uh, in, in a very black and white way that they view the world. So I'll get those comments. Um, you know, Michael Jai White, for example, if you criticize him at all, whether it's a movie or anything else, you always get that comment where someone will call you a racist. It's like, why? Just because I don't like a specific movie? Whereas I could say, I, I don't like Hard Target 2. In fact, funny enough, I interviewed Scott Atkins. I told him I didn't like Hard Target 2, and here's my reasons. It's probably not as bad as you're saying, but compare it to Hard Target, it can't compete, and that's the problem. That, that it's always problem. a losing battle. That's fine. No, Nobody cares. He's a heterosexual white male. Nobody cares if you criticize something he was involved with. You criticize um, Captain Marvel, and all of a sudden, you're sexist. It's like, I, I just didn't like the movie. Oh, you're a sexist because it's a female lead. You know, you criticize uh, Welcome to Sudden Death. Oh, you're a racist. It's like, why? The movie sucked. I even told Michael Jai White what I didn't like about the movie. You're racist. It's like, okay, so if it was the exact same movie and Scott Atkins was in it and I could say, Welcome to Sudden Death sucks, it's, oh, no, that's fine. Whatever, you know, it's a white guy in it. Nobody cares. Anyway, <laughs> that shit really bugs me, man. So I just wanted to say, um, whoever has that, like, mentality, you know, you're allowed to criticize people based on the merit of their work. If it's a woman, it doesn't mean you're a sexist. If it's, you know, a minority, it doesn't mean you're a racist. It's like, we should be allowed to criticize work just based on the quality of the work regardless of the individual it's like in this day and age 
at least in America, it seems, well, you know, unless it's like a straight white dude, then then criticize the hell out of it, right? And then you'll be fine. Nobody cares. Nobody bats an eye. Um, we got to treat work. Look, if it's a movie, I'm going to criticize it because it's a movie. I don't really care if it's a female lead or whatever the guy is. And these days, who who knows, man? It may not even be somebody that identifies as man or woman these days leading the movie, right? And then all of a sudden, like, you're transphobic if you don't like the movie. Anyway, I, I just had to go on a little rant there because that shit is really, really annoying. And another point I want to make, too, is greatness will forever transcend race. Nobody cares that Michael Jordan is black, that Mike Tyson is black, that Bruce Lee is Chinese. They're so great and they inspired literally every single color, every person across the entire world that greatness in whatever field, it just transcends race. It does. So the fact that those discussions even come up would just tell me if someone's bringing race or sexism or whatever into a discussion, it just tells me they don't really think that individual is that great, which is the irony of the whole thing. If they're trying to defend, you know, whatever the girl in Captain Marvel is or you know, Michael Jai White movie, etc. It's almost like, well, if you think these people are so good or so great, then then race would have nothing to do with it, man. But the way they view the world, race has every single thing to do with it or sex or whatever, you know. You cut somebody off in traffic, you know, who's a woman. Oh, you're a sexist. It's like, no, that asshole just cuts you off because you're like that car that was, they wanted to get in front of basically, right? Had nothing to do with your sex or race. So anyway, you guys... Again, it's probably a minority in the comment section, but you guys need to get over that, man. You really do. Okay, so now as far as like the whole hater conversation goes, I really think... I really think there's two qualifications you have to be in order to become a hater. For one, you gotta be jealous of a certain individual and what they've accomplished. So, from that criteria, I can't be a hater against Michael Jai White or anyone else in my opinion, and I'll tell you why. I'm a fitness guy, I'm a martial artist, and that's what I would judge Michael Jai White by. He's really good at that. He built a great physique, like I said, very athletic. I would say he's a great martial artist. Now, again, I don't think he's a fighter, and I'll tell you why. At the end of the day, it's not really healthy to compare yourself to other people. Like, being competitive can be healthy, but it could also be very unhealthy. Like, if you're literally in a competition with somebody, and that's what you're pursuing, then yes, it's very healthy. It's very healthy. You should strive to beat them in whatever way, whether it's basketball, fighting, anything, chess, whatever. If it's competitive and you're engaging in that, then yes, I think it's very healthy. Otherwise, if you are just a lifelong martial artist, somebody involved in self-improvement, somebody involved in bodybuilding, fitness, whatever, it doesn't really make sense to compete and really compare yourself against another individual because the goal, it's not to try to be better than them. Like, you should look for individuals that can inspire you and try to get up to that level or whatever. I mean, there, there's always like, you're gonna judge yourself based on, um, you know, I'm this good based on how good this guy is and if this guy's this good, etc. But really what it comes down to is you're always competing against yourself because the goal is to become a better version of you than you were yesterday or a year ago or five years ago. That's what it's all about. And that gives you like true confidence because that's ultimately like the determining factor. Are you progressing or not? And happiness and everything else comes whether you're progressing. Not, not. It doesn't matter what another person's doing. It's like, where are you in your journey? So if you talk about playing the hand you're dealt, I would say just out the gate that Michael Jai White was dealt a better hand than most people. Like if you read stories about him when he was like 10, 12, 14 years old, I mean, he was already like a grown man. He was tall, he was muscular already at that age when i started i was i was like 10 years old i was literally a 98 pound weakling i didn't even oh hell dude like at 14 at 14 i was i was like 95 pounds i do distinctly remember that and then i got into weightlifting and then i got into martial arts um you know a little before that but basically i started when i wasn't even 100 pounds so for my progression i went from this skinny kid with glasses similar to like john claude van damme which is why I've always loved his journey into what he became. Um, and I even had a speech impediment. So that's, oh, kids could be brutal. So I was a skinny kid with glasses and a speech impediment. <laughs> I had a long way to go to try to become like these guys you see in these movies back here, man. 
Um, and a lot of them inspired me a lot, like Bruce Lee, John Claude Van Damme, you know, Lee, it's Sylvester Stallone, uh, even Arnold. Now, obviously, <laughs> Arnold was like, he started at a different level, kind of more like Michael J. White. He just, um, let's just say him and like Dolph Lundgren, Michael J. White were kind of dealt a better hand in general. They, they, they had more to work with, right? They had more to work with than someone like me or Van Damme or Stallone. It's physically impossible for this little man to win. Drago is a look at the future. But all these guys achieved so much regardless of the hand. You just, you just play the hand you're dealt. You make the best of it. And so gauging my progress, I'm very happy what I've done. Like completely 100% natural. I always say health first. And then the martial arts, you know, Michael J. White will tell different black belts, which is fine. Well, you know, if anyone looked into my history, I got multiple black belts too. I don't really talk about them because I don't even do forms. I'm not trying to like teach classes. That part doesn't really matter. For me, it's all about, some people are very fixated by the way on getting higher degrees. And okay, cool, whatever, it looks good on paper. But to me, it's always been about the skill. So even like my techniques, I work on movement. I break everything down. So it's it's what's important to me. It's like I it's not I don't really care if somebody thinks I'm doing a taekwondo kick. For me, it's like it's, it's a specific kick for a specific purpose. So if it's a roundhouse kick, there's a specific purpose. I might even do kicks I would never ever utilize like in a quote fight or even a sparring match. There's no point. But there are other reasons I'd perform those kicks. But people who have less knowledge in the martial arts they don't see like the crossover benefits that you could take utilizing certain movements that you would never technically use like in a combat situation per se. In combat sports, there's only one component of martial arts. So is self-defense or self-expression. There's, there's a lot of different reasons to train a martial arts, but basically not everything you do is going to be applicable, nor should it, nor is the reason you're even training it because it's going to work necessarily in a real life self-defense situation or a combat sport. And people will give like Aikido a lot of shit because of that. It's like, they, they don't understand what these guys are really doing. And even some of the drills that I do have nothing to do with Aikido, by the way, but they don't really understand the crossover benefits. But I'm not gonna get in that discussion right now. That, that That's a long ass discussion. I gotta get into uh, commenting on some of the stuff Michael Jai White says. But anyway, the criteria for being a hater is you have to be jealous of something else somebody achieved. And I'm just not. I'm actually pretty happy where I'm at right now. Actually. In a lot of ways, I'm still in my athletic prime. I got my health, everything's going good. So I'm very happy with the transformation I've made uh, to try to become like one of these characters in the movies in my real life. That's that's what I've always wanted to do, man. Like I wanted to look like Rambo or Van Damme and then, uh, you know, have the martial arts skills and the athleticism and all that. Like that, that's just, that's how I identify, you know, based on what I've pursued in my life. Okay, so I feel very good with that. And then number two, I think a, a hater basically has given up on their dreams and their goals. And they're so jaded and dissatisfied with their life knowing because they literally threw in the towel that they will never achieve that. So then they want to tear down and hate on other people. And I had an individual actually who I had on the channel before. He's 100% a hater. Uh, he fits both of those criterias. Like with me, my dream is alive and well. And I'm gonna actually have some really exciting stuff I'll talk about and share my journey. And hopefully it can inspire you guys on your journey to um, do something for you that you feel is very great and going to be amazing and give you a lot of meaning and uh, joy in your life because it's something, you know, maybe you had this dream that you set to the side for whatever reason but you never forgot about it and you, you always knew in the back of your head, I can still make this a reality. It is not going to be easy at all. And I'm gonna share my journey because I think with what I'm, I'm getting involved in and putting the necessary steps to that uh, I will finally make my ultimate dream a reality and it can inspire you guys to basically, a lot of you guys like my age, right? And I know there's certain big goals, big dreams that you didn't quite accomplish yet. But, and some of you might have just completely given up on them, but it'll be a reminder. It's like, look, I, I, I could be a guy that still does it. So why can't you guys, right? So anyway, that that's, I'll take you guys on that journey. We'll see what happens. But the point is 
I have not given up on these big dreams and these big goals. Uh, and if I have, I probably would just be a jaded hater, honestly, right? I would be very depressed. Uh, I'd feel bad about myself, et cetera. But that's just not who I am, man. Like, I'm not the kind of guy that wants to tear other people down. So as far as the Michael J. White thing, look, all I'm commenting on is certain things that I disagree with. And I think I should be allowed to do that, whether it's Michael J. White or anybody else. I have no issue with the man. I met him actually earlier this year at Alan Goldberg's uh, martial arts event, Action Extravaganza, and he's going to have another one uh, coming soon, end of January. And I'm pretty sure Michael J. White and Don the Dragon Wilson and probably Bill Superfoot Wallace, uh, Cynthia Rothrock, I'm sure all these people will be there again. Really great, cool people in the martial arts community who achieved a lot. Uh, you guys should go there, right? You should definitely go there. I, I enjoyed meeting these people there. But anyway, I met Michael J. White there. I interviewed him. I think he's a cool guy. He's got an amazing relationship with his wife. You could tell that's what he values. And again, human relationships are the most important thing. Obviously, martial artist guy, fitness guy. So, seemed like a cool guy, man. I got nothing against him. There are certain things that he says that, um, that I disagree with, man. And at the end of the day, DJ Vlad knows what he's doing to get a shitload of views. Michael Jai White is playing along. And he knows people are talking about this stuff, myself included. And some people think, oh, maybe he's just trolling. Maybe he believes this. I don't really know, but I'm going to comment on it. And here's another thing I'll do, which I don't I don't understand why DJ Vlad doesn't do this, man. So obviously he's been on DJ Vlad a lot, right? And they break those videos down based on, you know, the topic. Michael Jai White has a, uh, a new movie that just came out, As Good As Dead. I don't know why DJ Vlad is not saying, hey, by the way, check out Michael J. White's new movie, As Good As Dead, which I'll point out, uh, like, I'll point out, so I, I've seen the trailer, it actually looks promising compared to a lot of the stuff that he's done. It looks actually pretty promising. So check out his movie, let me know in the comments what you think. I mean, hell, I'll promote that for him. I mean, DJ Vlad's not doing it. He should be pushing that out. He's got the big ass audience. So anyway, um, let me know what you guys think. Is it worth watching? And if, if you guys say it is, if enough of you guys say it is, I'll, I'll watch it myself. Maybe I'll even do a review on the channel. Hopefully it's as good as uh, what Scott Atkins recently put out, Accident Man 2 Hitman's Holiday. I was pleasantly surprised. Hopefully I'm pleasantly surprised by this Michael Jai White movie. But anyway, let's let's get to some of the comments that that he uh, he said. They want me up here to finish this, the fight scene with Steven Zagal, and they're really trying to entice me to like injure him. I'm dead, I'm, I'm, I kid you not, this shit happened. <laughs> And I told him, listen, I promise if he steps out of line, I have no problem tightening shit up, put it that way. When we did the fight scene, Steven Zagal was very nervous. This is the truth. He was very, very nervous. That is such a bizarre story that logically it doesn't make a lot of sense that the producers would want the main star in the film to basically get hurt. Now, I can't say that's true or not true. I mean, Michael Jai White definitely believes that's true, and maybe it is. It's just such a bizarre story. But also, the point I wanted to make is, uh, let's say Seagull did get out of line, and Michael Jai White basically had to clean house, clean up uh, this whole Seagull situation. I don't think he should discount Seagull that easily. Like, if it became one-on-one -on -one with him and Seagull, it, it would be a fight, man. I don't I don't think he would just viciously beat Seagull like it would be no issue. I hate bullies, and I'm not going to be one. Steven Seagull is not a fighter, okay? I would never do that to any person. But do I think Michael is a tough guy? No. Do I think he's a martial artist? No. I'm a good friends with Chuck Zito. Right? Yeah, I Chuck, met him. Yeah. Chuck Zito, you, you met him at my house. Yeah, your house, yeah. He beat up Van Dam. The whole Chuck Zito Van Dam story I covered on the channel. I mean, look, I said really nice things about both those guys, and they're both badasses, like in their own way. Obviously, Chuck Zito's life is different than Van Dam's life, right? Chuck Zito, you would say, has more of a hardcore life, and I don't doubt for a minute that he could very easily handle business but somebody like van dam just in general has nothing to do with chuck zito i i don't think you can discount him so michael jai white will say van dam is not a fighter 
They got in the squabble. He beat the shit out of Van Damme. And I, as a friend, said, like, yo, man, you shouldn't take pride in that. Van Damme's not a fighter, man. Van Damme has more fights on record than Michael Jai White does. So I just, I don't understand how Michael Jai White could say, Bruce Lee's not a fighter. Van Damme is not a fighter. Steven Skull's not a fighter. I disagree. Steven Skull is not a fighter. But basically claim that he is. It's like... At the end of the day, all those, what all of them have in common are their movie fighters. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. So if Michael Jai White wants to say these other guys aren't, quote, fighters, then I don't think he should put himself in the category as fighter. I'm, you know, I, I enjoy keeping my, my sword sharpened with great fighters. Because Bruce Lee went around and trained with all kinds of different people as well. He's like the godfather of mixed martial arts for a reason, trained with all different champions. And once a week I would go there and take a prowl with Bruce and spend the whole rest of the week working on what he would show me. And it actually, in a great way, improved my fighting stuff. Van Damme trained with a bunch of people, different arts. Uh, Steven Skull has a very interesting history. So all these guys have trained with a whole multitude of great martial arts with different styles. Which is what Michael Jai White does too, which is which is great, which is great. So the mythology of Michael Jai White, and, and really he's the only one that really talks about it. I, I don't think other people really talk about it. Person in the Expendables I could definitely whoop is... The Expendables. Bruce Lee would be no match for... Me. To box Mike Tyson? <laughs> I would love that. Do you think he would win? Yeah, of course I think I would win. Okay. You know, I, 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 you know, I, I, okay, I had physical gifts growing up in fighting. You know, with Michael Jai White, it's, it's, it's quite fascinating, man. It's quite fascinating. And he even talked about on, on another DJ Vlad interview why he did not decide to become a professional fighter. Fine, good. But I, I do believe had he devoted his life to that, he would have been very successful at it. So I'm not discounting his uh, potential to have become a great fighter. That's not what this video is about. I'm basically commenting on, um, he didn't go that route and he trains with these other guys, you know, says, says he's sparring hard or, you know, fighting him, whatever, in their gym. I don't, I, I always enjoyed fighting. That's why I do it all the time still. There, there's just no evidence of it, man. So you'll see footage or pictures where he's messing around with John Jones. He's, um, you know, messing around with like Donald Cowboy Cerrone. There's pictures of him with uh, Francis Ngannou. More recently, some pretty cool footage with him and Uriah Hall. But they're basically playing tag, man. So that is not a sparring session. I mean, you, you could say that's a light sparring session. I, I don't think uh, anybody who partakes in that can say I'm a fighter. Like I do that kind of sparring all the time. That that's literally my preferred sparring with my brother or like with you know the Krav Maga instructor, etc. It's like because it's very safe, but you have to be pretty skilled actually because you're you're kind of trying not to hurt the other guy, but you know if you would have got hit. Whereas it's actually much better and safer if you're if you're at a certain skill level to do that type of sparring or tag or whatever you want to call it. It's way safer than doing a sparring match against somebody who's like very low level because they can't control themselves they kind of in their head they almost think it's like a fight it's like but the point is that because these ufc fighters are at a high skill level because mjw is at a high skill level i'm pretty sure there's an agreement in place let's pull our punches and kicks because neither one of us need to get hurt even though we could hurt each other that's not what this training session is about. There's all kinds of things you could work on, like timing, angles of attack, you know, just even testing out new things, man, uh, without the um, threat of actually getting hurt. So there, there's benefit to that training. And yeah, I think it could make any martial artist better, but it is no way, shape or form a fight. And if that's the kind of training you're doing, I don't think you should be able to call yourself a fighter. So, you know, he had alluded to different footage that might get released later there are, there are a lot of champions people i spar against they may they may um 
record it, whatever. But I don't, I don't show things out there because it, it'll look arrogant. It'll look, it'll look like I'm trying to get attention. To me, it's it's no different than like the Frank Dukes Kumite footage. It's look, this might be the most amazing footage we've ever seen. We might be shocked by it. We might say, oh my God, I can't believe a human being has achieved this level of expertise and badassness in the martial arts, and it would just blow our minds. But until that footage was released, either Frank Dukes' Kumite footage or Michael Jai White's, you know, UFC fighter footage, it just, um, it's either the best footage ever on the planet or it just never happened. And that's why we've never seen it. And then the other thing that he'll say that he he was basically born with a certain gift to be like, he just has these talents as a great fighter. Maybe he does. We know he's a great martial artist. Maybe he does have this amazing gift to be an amazing fighter. I kind of think it's, it's almost like an obligation to share your gift with the rest of the world. That's, it's a it's a simple thing. I do I do it from from the, the heart. You just love it. Yeah. You don't care about like if anybody knows. I don't need to be prove myself. I'm not saying Michael Jai White doesn't have something great to share with these different UFC fighters. I'm sure they do pick up certain techniques that it's like, oh, you know, I can actually implement this, and this would kind of like benefit me and make me a better fighter overall. He probably does have stuff to share. But so does Steven Seagal, in my opinion, because you guys will like make fun of him, you know, and they make a big thing. Oh, Steven Seagal taught these UFC fighters like Anderson Silva or Leona Machida the front kick. It's like, no, you guys are all taking it completely out of context, man. It's it's like a certain different variation of how to throw it and not telegraph it and have it land and land it as precisely as you have taught Anderson and Leona. I mean, it's not an easy kick to learn. The way we're doing it is not easy. It's very deceptive. Coincidentally, uh, Anderson Silva and Louis and Machida, after training with Seagull, both knocked out opponents in the UFC shortly after. Now, Anderson Silva were, will kind of joke about it, but Leota Machida still says he still gives credit to uh, Steven Seagull. So, Steven Seagull is a really high level. He's not going to UFC gyms to basically learn from them. He's going to bestow knowledge and techniques. And, and again, maybe that's what Michael Jai White is doing. I don't doubt that that he actually does have something interesting to show some of these guys. But that brings me back to like the overall argument, man. Uh, so in my opinion, Steven Seagal is not that much different than Michael Jai White. I mean, obviously their martial arts styles and their physiques are quite a bit different, but with what they do with the training and everything and that they do have knowledge to share uh, and techniques to share with like professional well-respected fighters and that's nothing to scoff at man but if michael jai white is going to say steven skull is not a fighter I, I just don't think he can quantify himself as a fighter like of all these guys van damme had the most fights so when he says van damme's not a fighter but basically oh but, but i am it's like no man i think either you are and then you have to give them credit of like they are too or basically none of you guys are van damme's not a fighter man steven skull is not a fighter Bruce Lee was not a fighter. Every now and then it, it gets on my nerves and I, you know, people go, oh, he's not a real fighter. Yeah, guess what? I am not a real, I am not a real fighter. <laughs> well, now we're getting somewhere. <laughs>